Hey, everybody, what's up? It's Chase. Welcome to another episode of the show. Super excited to welcome our guest here in just a second, Priyanka Chopra Jonas. Okay, this woman is a force of nature, a multi-award winning actress, producer, one of the most recognized personalities in the world. And speaking of world, former Miss World, she made her debut in 2002 and has appeared in more than 60 films, six zero films produced in India and the United States. In 2015, she made history as the first Indian-born actor to lead an American TV network when she starred in the ABC drama Quantico. Uh, she's also got a, a, a cool new uh, Netflix show out right now called White Tiger, and she's got a new book that we're excited to talk about in this episode called Unfinished. This is an amazing episode. I can't wait for you to check it out. So please join me for Priyanka Chopra Jonas in the house. Let's go. Priyanka, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Chase, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, it's appropriate to start off with congratulations because um, you have a lot of stuff happening right now. And I'm guessing this is standard for you, but um, there is a lot of ground for us to cover. But before we do, uh, I like to ask the question of someone who is as well known as you are worldwide. Uh, so much of your life is described in the media by other people, by reporters and journalists and the films that you're in and the, all of the activities that you pursue. But I would love to hear it from you. Describe your early childhood. Take us on a short journey from early childhood to now in your own words. Good Lord. It took me almost 300 pages and a whole memoir to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want the short version. Give us oh, the short you version. Get and, and you don't want to early, read early, early life. <laughs> you want a synopsis. Um, yeah, I got you. Um, you know, my early life was, um, I was born in India. And I'm the daughter of two military parents. So every two years, you know, my dad would move around in India, my mom. Um, and at when I was in the third grade, I was sent to a boarding school because I behaved like a brat. And, um, and then I came back a couple of years later and decided that I wanted to go to high school in America with my mom's sister and her cousins were, my cousins were living there. And uh, I lived, my high school years were spent in the U.S., in Queens, New York, in Indianapolis, in Iowa, in, um, in Newton, Massachusetts. I moved around here as well. And then I went back to India when I was 17 years old. Um, by fluke, chanced upon a beauty pageant where I won the Miss India pageant. I was sent into the Miss World pageant. I won that as well. And the next direct transition was supposed to be Hindi movies, Bollywood movies, which was normal for you know beauty queens at the time. Started doing Bollywood movies and decided 10 years ago I wanted to try pop music. Decided to do that, came to America. Dropped a few singles, was signed to Interscope Records. Um, then I decided I'll pivot and start, try acting in America. Meanwhile, I also decided I'll pr produce movies. And I started doing that in India while pursuing acting in a completely new country um, at 35 and saying, all right, I want to try something totally new. Let's be mainstream and be brown in Hollywood. Not easy to do. <laughs> and... You know what? A couple of years later, this is where you found me, where I'm finally doing the work that I set out to do, and you know, I'm talking about it. <laughs> well, you said uh, enough things for ten lifetimes in there, and <laughs> and the the level you've uh, ascended to in any one of those careers would be worthy uh, of not just a memoir, but uh, several documentaries. And I think there's something embedded in in changing so many things and exploring so many things. Is that a curiosity? Is that a, a passion for achievement? Is that a desire to be seen, to make art? Is Where does that come from in you? Because you've at, at you know the ripe young age you are now, you're, you're already more prolific than 99.999% of your peers. What, what drives that in you? 
I think a deep seated desire to grow. Um, you know, ever since I was a young girl, I moved around so much that I saw the benefit in um, seeing change as a sense of adventure, of being curious, of being a student, of not being afraid of what change could bring. Because even if it could bring failure, oh my gosh, when it brings success, it's so fun because it's yours, you know? So I have a deep seated ambition, I think, of just constantly evolving and going to the next rung of whatever my success story is at that point. So let's see, it, it's, there's people right now who are listening or watching this and they are, again, you know, the audience for the show is, is full of creators and entrepreneurs. And I know right now there are thousands of people who are listening to this that are terrified to make even one transition to go from being uh, you know, a docu not documentary filmmaker to um, uh, an action or a feature filmmaker. There's a person who is nervous to transition from a wedding photographer to a director. There's, and and I'm wondering, has someone who moves so seamlessly between all these things, give them some advice? Because there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of um, angst. There's a lot of uh, resistance to change. So give the folks who are listening and watching those folks like me and others who have tiptoed rather than jumped with both feet as you have. I actually would love to talk about it because I think that we, we should talk a little bit more about um, change and evolution. And instead of being defined by the safety net, you know, and Sometimes the safety net is great. Um, you know, you know where your next check's coming from. You know what the next job is. You know, you need that sometimes. But I think it really depends on how deeply ambitious you are and where you want to go. So if your heart, I think, is in something which feels like a risk, you're always going to be stagnant unless you take the risk, and unless you make the first step. And no one is saying that your career has to change. It's just about taking the first step. Take one step in the direction of your dreams. Take another step in the direction of your dreams. You don't have to change your life overnight, even though sometimes that happens and that's fun too. But taking one step into the direction of your dreams is so powerful because slowly you realize that you're kind of running and you didn't even know how you got there. It's, it's survival and we're all born with that this idea of taking one step is powerful and it seems like that is a muscle that you have developed, but I want to go back to something you said early on. You said, you know, and, and I left uh, beauty and pageantry to start acting in movies or was it modeling or acting in movies? And you said, because that was, you know, typical or something. I don't remember your exact phrasing. And, and yet so you, it seems like at first you did what was expected, even though you stumbled into, as you said, the, the um, being Miss India and Miss World, not something most people trip into. Um, but so is it true that you were doing the expected thing? And then there was, was there some sort of sense of awakening or ownership that made you realize that this is my one precious life? Was there a new gear that you hit? How did you go from doing what was expected to the unexpected? Absolutely. That's such a good question, actually. Um, when, what I mean by stumbling upon Miss India um, was we used to watch the pageant, uh, you know, every year when it came on. I was like, oh, the Miss India pageant. And as a family, we'd watch it. So my brother, who was 10 years old at that time, sort of had it in his head that this pageant was coming up. I had taken these mall shots, you know, these really soft focus, hand on your face, mall shots. And I had moved back from the States and occupied his room. He was kicked out of his room at 10 years old. So in his 10-year-old mind, he told my mom to apply for the Miss India pageant so that he would get his room back and I would move to Mumbai. <laughs> and that's how she sent my pictures in. And the reason why I did it was because I had just come back to India after attending high school in the U.S., and unfortunately, American high schools don't prepare you for the level of education everywhere else in the world. So I was failing in every subject. I was like, I could not even get a C at that point. Um, and that was really hard for me. So I was looking for an excuse to skip my exams. The universe collided. 
I decided I'm very competitive. So once you throw me into a competition, I'm, I'm going to run. Like I land on my feet. That's just the nature. Of, if you play a board game with me, I'm, I'm a, you know, road runner. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's terrible. Don't play board games with me. Or charades. I won't play Monopoly <laughs> with you. The next time we're together, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, but I think after tripping into that, most um, pageant winners in India at that time got into Bollywood movies. It was just the thing that happened the debut of the new Miss India and it, I started getting movie offers at that time and my parents and I talked about it. And my dad said, you know, you're 18 years old and take a chance. And if you fail at it, do it for a year and a half, two years. If you fail at it, you've always got school to go back to. The pressure of the enormous enormity of the decision was taken off of me by my parents. And it was expected. I went in there. I hated it in the beginning because I was like, who sits around for hours to say lines for like five minutes? And then you sit around for hours again. And then you say lines for five minutes. It seems so counterproductive to me at that time. And it's, that's the sausage <laughs> being made, right? It's, that's not pretty. <laughs> it really wasn't. And most people don't understand that. Like I didn't because I didn't come from the film business. I was like, oh, it's all glitz and glamour and it'd be really pretty. And it wasn't, it was hard work and it took hours and I worked weekends. And after doing my first two movies, when I saw it all put together on 70 mm for the first time, and I saw people laughing when I made a joke or people crying when I provoked an emotion. And I looked around the theater. I'll never forget the first time I felt that. And I looked around the theater and I was like, oh my gosh. What I did on all those hours of endless waiting for this, that five minutes has created a piece of art that moves someone. What a powerful thing. And I remember that's when I fell in love. I was like, this is how I want to express myself. It seems like an early, that, that supportive moment from your family was really helpful. And um, I'm wondering if you could talk about that and, and surrounding yourself with people that are supportive and willing to embrace your big, hairy, audacious goals and your dreams. And so I'd like to hear from you about that. And then if you could, at the end of that little answer, shift and, t and give some advice to some folks, because there are people who have big, crazy dreams and they're currently not spending time with the people that are supporting those dreams. So first your world, and then some advice for others. If I didn't have, or if I hadn't had my parents um, giving credence to my intelligence, my opinions, my dreams, I don't think I would have grown up to be an adult who does that to myself. I really give a lot of credit to my upbringing um, and the level-headedness that my parents had, that they didn't push their dreams upon. They didn't laugh at my audacious thoughts. They give me but they gave me credit for who I was. Um, in fact, they encouraged it. They encouraged my individuality. So, and I hope to be that kind of parent someday. And, you know, I always try to talk about it so much because, because I really think it's so important if parents started investing in their children's individuality and, you know, asking them to use their brains and, you know, what do you want to do? What are your feelings? And listen to them. It makes them very confident adults. And I feel like it's very important, even if you have a few people, it doesn't have to be the whole world. If you have a few people in your corner that can dream as big as you can or that make your dreams a reality, as crazy as, as it may be, I think that is a great um, impetus to take the first step. And all you have to do is never, never look at the long game, right? It's like, okay, let me take one step today and then I'll take another step tomorrow and then just one more. And slowly you see like you're halfway out and you didn't realize it. But it's important to have someone in your corner. Just like surround yourself with support. Yeah, it's so important that the, the aspect of community, whether it's a huge community or as you said, just a, a support group that... Or even uh, one person them. or like a friend yeah. or just anyone who... You can talk to you about what you truly, what your pursuit is, what your, you know, um, passion is. 
for you, was that your parents or were there other people that you were close with that were also supportive? Different people along the way. Um, this is something I also speak about in the book, but I truly believe in that, you know, all of us really have an individual journey. We're born alone, we're going to die alone. Everyone else sort of comes in and out of our lives for however long or short a duration they're supposed to be. In. We can't dictate that. We can't change that. People are born, people will die, people will break up, people will move away. And it's so important to have a real relationship with yourself and with your dreams and your ambitions. Um, and know that, you know, there will be different people along the way. I had different mentors, different friends, some people, my team, some people who've been in it, some who haven't. Uh, my parents always, uh, my friends who are a very tight knit circle. My inner circle is really tight. It's the same people for many, many years. Um, I think that also gives me a lot of, you know, a sense of feeling solid on my feet. What about uh, when you run into a blocker, uh, people around you who aren't supportive, or have there been things that stood in your way that you felt like you had to overcome, or chapters of your life that you had to turn your back on? Um, I'm just wondering. Um, for the folks at home, I don't want them to, and this is why the book, and we'll get to the book in just a second. It's absolutely incredible. First of all, the book is called Unfinished. And if you're listening or watching right now, it's an absolute must. Um, I've got the digital version open and I've, it's got highlights and little markups. It's not pretty, so I won't share it, but <laughs> I've got so many marks all over it. Congratulations. But oh, in there, you. You, you talk about, about, you know, the people who are supporting you and, I just don't want the world to think that, uh, you know, to compare your highlight reel, which is epic already, even at a young age, to their real life. They just got a parking ticket. They are stuck in traffic. The, they forgot to turn on the dryer and they got their, their clothes are wet and it's time to go to work. So there's all kinds of, you know, they're trying to compare themselves themselves in, and this is very not uncommon in our culture. So Talk to me for a second about some struggles that you had going through all these transitions, multicultural, changing careers, seemingly at a whim. Was there anything that was hard? Some of it was so hard, you know? It's just, I'm like a duck. I'm paddling furiously underneath the surface of the water, but on top of the surface, I, I try to look like I'm gliding. <laughs> <laughs> um it's just, it's called grace under fire, I guess. I don't know. Um, I Maybe that's a pageant thing that I've kind of imbibed. But <laughs> I think, you know, when you are a woman in, um, in a tough business, you kind of have to create a tough exterior. And um, we've seen many, many women have to do that. And I had to as well. Doesn't mean I'm not vulnerable. Doesn't mean it wasn't hard. I have the same issues, you know, um, that everybody else has. And you know, running late and trying to figure out multiple things and you know, feeling hungry when I'm not supposed to or not getting enough sleep. And just because I want the, the stars, like, you know, I have to work at the speed of, you know, trying to achieve those stars. There's no free lunch in the world. Um, I'm recognizing and remembering what is priority is important. So it's not seamless. It's messy. It's chaotic. It's, it's hard. And it's, it's, you know, it's grimy. And you kind of have to dust yourself off and just keep getting up. Because it's easy to sit down comfortably on a couch and with, and with the seduction of wallowing in self-pity, um, you know, which is very easy to do. And I've done it multiple times. I, I love having, you know, pizza is what gives me a lot of peace when I'm wallowing in self-pity. But the other times when I need to get up and run, I access my inner fire. I access my greed to um, succeed. I access my ambition to want to be better every single day at my job and to leave behind a legacy and think the long game only when I need to. When I don't need to, I wear my pajamas and eat pizza like everyone else. <laughs> uh, so a clear thread through the book is this, um, this multiculturalism Multi multiculturalism and this multidisciplinary 
artist that you are. There's you toggle between activism and producing films, and it's to say that you 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 have entered so many genre already is you know that would be beating a dead horse because I've already asked you three times about that. I just can't believe now a book. So how was this? <laughs> how was this process? You know, creatively different or more challenging or did it feel like it was you know again i i love that we're all hyphens we can you know we're all five different things at the same time now which um it's what this community does and lives and breathes so there's a obvious connection there but just continuing to um, move into now writing what was new or hard or different about writing your story it's terrifying first of all like you know this community is going to know when you pivot into something completely new, especially like, you know, you're becoming a director from a writer or you're, um, you know, from an actor becoming a producer, whatever that pivot might be, which is so seamless in our industry, you know, we, we have to sort of navigate within the same waters. Um, because I, I feel like eventually when it comes down to it, creativity can manifest into anything. So to me, being an actor or a producer or now an author, or an entrepreneur comes from the same place of wanting to be creative. And um, these are all just different, um, technically different things of the same thing, basically. So it's like writing an episode on TV. You know, you have to think about what the series arc would be, what each episode is saying, you know, whereas writing a feature is about thinking of the three acts and what is the first act and what what's the story you're going to tell in two hours. So the same way, I feel like, the technique of writing a book is so hard when you do it for the first time. And there were times where I was just like, why did I start this thing? This is a monstrous <laughs> beast. How will I ever finish so many pages? And then I would get a Usually message. about one third of the way through. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're one third of the way through and you're just like, oh my God, what have I it's done? Like, and then you have your publisher <laughs> texting you saying, can I get some more pages? And I'm like, I don't have any. Um, it was terrifying. And then you go back to pizza, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. So many times I've just shut the laptop and I'm just like, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And then I don't. <laughs> it only took a global pandemic for me to actually sit down and finish it. <laughs> so the story is incredible. And, you know, now we've also, we've, we've traced your career across a handful of different, um, industries and in each of them in your own way you've broken through you shattered a ceiling in the united states having made history as the first indian-born actor to lead an american network tv series when you started quantico um the work that you've done in india is you know obviously renowned and that that population, that universe, they, you, you stand for so much to them. How, how are you making a habit of breaking through all these ceilings? You, you've got a helmet on. I mean, what, what, what's, I mean, it, it seems like, is that a motivating factor? Like I need to blaze new ground in each of these things, or is that a, does that come from a hurt part of you, a past where I need to prove myself to myself or my family or my peers? Or is it, is it um, positive ambition of setting new goals and especially setting a high mark for women of color? You've done so much already. Where does that come from? And how have you, is it a decision? I guess is the real question. Are you deciding that you're going to break new ground in all of these different areas? I do think it's a honing signal for me, but I don't think it always was. I think when I started off working in the entertainment business, I just kind of hit a lot of walls, you know, um, walls that I didn't have when I was being raised, walls where I was made to, as a woman, feel like I was dispensable or you know interchangeable um i didn't i wanted to lead movies i wanted to be the poster on on you know the face on the poster but it was usually the guys you know like it was stuff like that i i bumped against a lot of walls and i think i just got tired of it and 
you know, I, I knew that I was fearless enough to pivot and try something new. I knew that I was, I had confidence enough to, you know, go into uncharted territory and then not just dip my feet, but go in and try and swim. Cause I've done it as a kid many times, you know, different things. Um, and I just was ready to you know, jump in, but it definitely came from hitting so many walls and bumping against glass ceilings when I have this energy and ambition inside of me, which wants to play the long game, just like everyone else. You know, I want to have a legacy, just like everyone else. I want to leave behind something. I want to contribute to the world of arts. I want to contribute to the um, to culture. And I, I had that inside of me and I just kept bumping. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a road runner. Like, let's go. Let's just go. <laughs> Do you think that that is, you know, in, in the book, you refer to sort of being a cultural mashup. Is there something about, is it the, 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 is it a caste system in India and uh, an ambition in the United States? Is it just the opposite? Your parents have insane ambition for you uh, in your Indian family and America. Like what is it? how does this cultural mashup, how have you made it work? Cause there's, it seems like there's an alternate parallel universe where the combination of those things could just shut you down. Or they could be your assets, um, you know. Exactly. I don't. Exactly. I don't know if it should be daunting. I think it's it's sort of having a superpower that you have so much more knowledge of two different parts of the world and can see both of them for the goodness that they both have, and you know, become the best version of both. Like I really am an amalgamation of the East and the West, and I've taken the best from both. And you know, I'm an individual and I'm unique and. Um, the way I see it is being blessed with having experienced two different cultures completely and being so global is that it's made me so much more of an individual that can appreciate different parts of the world that I, I love cross-pollination. I love trying different things from different parts of the world, educating myself, asking questions, being curious about culture because, you know, culture doesn't look like one thing. Culture looks like many, many, many things depending on where you are. And I'm a fan of it. Dual continent, 20 year long career as an actor, as a producer, as a musician, and now as I, what I presume will be a best selling author because your book drops this week and everyone who is listening will support this. That is one thing that this community does is it comes to support the, the authors and the, the, the people, the creators like your, like yourself, obviously achieved an insane amount in an, in an already um, established career, but you're clearly using that in a way that is powerful beyond this industry. So, as a departure for us here, help us understand the way that you think the role that you have in, in both cultures creates this platform for you to do work beyond just uh, film and, and um, other areas of interest. And I'm, sp I'm speaking specifically of activism. That's one thing that's so impressive. You've, you, you've, you've, that is yet another thing that you've brought to bear in a way that few others have at a yeah, and I can see so much more of that in your future, just with what I, I know about you through reading the books and watching some films. And where is your activism going to take you? I think that it's the social responsibility of every individual with privilege, you know. And privilege again doesn't depend on your bank balance. Privilege is if you have a roof over your head, if you have the ability to feed your kids, you know, something as simple as that, like that. Is privilege and I come from a very non-assuming background in a small town in India and but philanthropy was something that was normal in my family it was not something you were patted on your back for and said oh my gosh you're such a good girl you, you shared your dolls with someone it was expected because from a very young age I was told that it doesn't matter how badly off you are or what you don't have someone else has less than you and, you know, when you, when you grow up with that thought, activism or standing for something or trying to push the needle um, and, you know, creating change 
whether that's in the form of opportunity, whether that's in my career as a producer, whether that is, you know, um, lending my platform that I have you know, received to, to causes that probably need attention. I'm a conduit. And I really think I take that part, part of me very seriously. I think, um, you know, having a social conscience does not require an empty wallet. It doesn't require you to change your lifestyle. It just requires empathy and compassion. And um, I think everyone really needs to think about that. All right. So I, I've got one last question. And before I get to that question, I want to again say thank you for writing this book. It's incredible. And again, it's uh, out this week. It's called Unfinished. One word on the title. Where'd you, where did the title come from? Just one, one quick bit there. The idea of it came at, on 73 Questions for Vogue. Um, they asked me what would my fictitious memoir be, and I just said I'm finished because I just feel like there's so much I want to do in life. <laughs> and then it, it, some fictitious fictitious <laughs> memoir that you have. fictitious be memoir. On. That I, <laughs> no, I wasn't. That was 2017 when I did that, and I started working on the memoir after. I hadn't even thought of oh, writing at that time. Now, okay, now you know the behind the scenes, folks. You heard it here first. But the the last question is around intuition. I've had so many amazing people. We've had the good fortune of having so many amazing folks, yourself, uh, others who have achieved great things. And it seems to me that intuition has played a role in everyone's success. And since we're at time here, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about that. What role, how did you know when to shift from um, pageantry to film or from India to the US or how to go back to India after being spending time here in high school? What was, you, you talked about it just so, like it was so obvious to you earlier in our conversation. What role does it play? And what would you, and, and specifically, because there's people out there who are not trusting theirs. And I think if you can share how you trust yours, it might inspire some folks. I think it's that thing you call gut feeling, you know, where you're curious about something and it's terrifying to do it for the first time. But the only thing that we can control is the quality of work we do. We cannot control the outcome. And being in a profession which is literally dependent on whether a movie does well or not, which is based on people's opinions in two minutes, after they've watched two years of work and they're like, oh, it's shitty or oh, it's great in like two minutes. Like literally my job is based on that. We can't base how much work we are putting in onto an outcome. You have to just, you, have to be, you know, let go of trying to control everything. You just have to recognize the opportunity, see what you're required to do today and do it at 110% and not let fear bog you down and then end up at like 70. You know, the idea is to always seek excellence. And if you are excellent every day, it's impossible for, you know, you not to be able to have excellence in whatever your chosen trajectory is. In perfect fashion, it is, it is. But in perfect fashion, your answer, you've talked about cultural mashup. Your answer is the epitome of a cultural mashup. So much of East and West and what <laughs> you just said. So thank you so much for being on the show. Um, we're over the moon to have you. And um, I'll just give a plug, if I may, again, to uh, your book, Unfinished. Um, my wife is uh, dying to get her hands on uh, your new hair care products. Oh. Um, they just came out, I think, this week. Well, it's um, unisex, so I would love for you and your wife to try it. This is one of those I'll products. My, I got I got my COVID hair under this hat. It could use some conditioning. I'm, there you I'm go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, just a, a shout out on the film White Tiger, which is on Netflix here in the United States. Um, fascinating film and um, getting such great reviews. So congratulations on that. And, uh, again, um, I would encourage folks to check you out on all of those different things that you've got going on now, which is completely crazy, um, <laughs> in the best way. So thank you for inspiring so many. 
um, putting your platform to work with all the activism. And is there anything else you want to, any place you'd like to steer people besides those areas, the book, uh, the film I just mentioned, anything else, if give them some coordinates on the internet or any other asks of our community? No, just, you know, that's the only thing I'll say, thank you for the support, first of all, and thank you for giving my book a chance. Um, it's a terrifying thing for a first time writer, but I would just say, you know, as a community, my only ask would be, let's also be very nice to each other and ourselves in our, I think there's a lot of pressure in our profession and in our community. And there's a lot of pressure since 2020 happened. I think people really need to take a second and just be kinder to each other right now. And it's a tough time for everyone. That would be my ask actually. <laughs> Extend a bit of grace. Well, we'll take you up on that. This community is heartfelt and earnest and um, your message is received. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for uh, having good me, luck. This was so yeah. fun. Likewise, thank you so much. We'll, we'll have you back again soon on your next big thing, which is probably in like two weeks, knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, just uh, thanks for being a friend of the show and uh, good luck with your continued, I mean, this book is going to be huge. Congratulations. Thank you. From your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> All right. Signing off, everybody. Hope to see you again. If not in the next five minutes, then at least tomorrow. Signing off. <laughs>